Hello everybody, Flick here, it's time for yet another Let's Look At, and today we are looking at Cornerstone, The Song of Tyreme. It's a indie game by Ascension Games out of Sweden, and there is a Kickstarter running as well as a Greenlight campaign, and as always, links will be in the description box below so that you can find out more about the game, also support it if you like what you're about to see. It's a game where you play as a young Viking searching for his father. I'm going to press play so it gets into the game while I'm describing. They described it to me as a mix between Wind Waker and Dark Souls, which is a very interesting mix if I do say so myself. Also, I'm only going to be playing through this once, but on their Kickstarter page there's a fantastic trailer they've made of kind of like the middle section of this build I've been given. Uh, them showing how to do it in about five or six different ways. It's, it's interesting. The game has a lot of physics based puzzles and elements to it. So everything you're seeing here I should point out is pre-alpha, it's not even alpha state, it's, it's proof of concept to help uh, drum up a bit of interest for their Kickstarter and their Kickstarter will it shares a bit of their vision where they want to go with it but already you can see kind of like the aesthetic Wind Waker-esque, not quite shell shaded, that's very hard to say with my accent. I'm not going to say it again, I'm going to avoid saying it. So anyway, we do have a boat of our own, we can steer the boat and I think I may once I do some of the starter quests. It's armed, there's a crossbow on the top and also there's a garden because red um, berries, I guess? I'm, I'm not sure if they're berries. The red things that grow on plants restore our health. There is also a live system, but we'll get into that later. So all the way over there you can see an enemy. There is combat in the game. It's a bit clunky at present because everything is pre-alpha as I said. Uh, but it's the same as any typical Zelda. And we're going to run over here and pick up a recipe because there is a crafting system that I'll go into. But first as I was saying there's a combat system where you kind of, if you pull out your weapon you can lock onto an enemy and then you can strafe around the enemy with like dive rolls and whatnot. In, in typical Zelda fashion, to avoid their attacks and then attack when they're they're not blocking, etc. So to show off the physics a little bit, if you get that symbol, that means you can pick up an item and you can just place it down again to like use it as a platform to jump high, or you can like just you know just throw it into the ocean. So that's what I did. So I've actually already played through this build, well, I, technically three times. Um, through no fault of the game, I accidentally lost my first two attempts at recording this video. The first time, um, there was some kind of weird glitch with OBS where even though I set it to record my window, it added a smaller resolution than the one I was playing in, so it looked a bit awful. And I didn't think it did the game justice, because I think even in this early stage it does look good. So I decided, oh, I'll record it again, and on the second attempt I totally forgot to reset up OBS, so I was recording to absolutely nothing. However, this time, the reason I bring it up is because I may forget to mention something because I think I've already mentioned it but really I'm remembering like a previous attempt so forgive me if I do realise in rendering this video that I've forgotten anything I'll mention that in the description as well. Also there's absolutely no reason for me to pick up this chair I just want to throw it in the ocean. There you go. Oh, I didn't realise they floated I thought they kind of just got destroyed. Hmm. So uh, we're supposed to be getting to the, back, the, the, the kind of gate thing it showed as this area opened. However, there's some stuff we can do in this village first, so I've probably wasted too much time as it is already, so we're going to move on a little bit and do the first of a few basic puzzles. Now keep in mind, you don't have to do what I'm doing right now, you could technically just run across the bridge, and it's fairly easy to dodge the enemies that are present in the game, other than the plants. There's these plants that spit poison at you that are pains. They do so much damage to you with each hit, and, they're, and th over that bridge there's like a huge field of them. So I'm going to do my best to avoid going that way, because I, I find it very difficult. We're coming up here and there's actually a hidden bit behind the waterfall there but I need a, a weapon to knock open a chest that's hidden in there. I think I can craft a sword. Yeah, so I can craft a crate if I wanted something to jump on. I can craft a bomb barrel if I wanted to, you know, throw an explosive. Uh, I could craft a sword to save me a bit of time. So actually I am going to do that. So I can swing my sword. The difference between this and the weapon I'm kind of working towards getting at the moment is that you can drop the sword and indeed you have to if you go up a ladder, for example. And we're just picking up some more stones there, which is a crafting material. And here we have a chest, which I'm going to slash open. And I believe that had gold in it, and the recipe for mines. So now I can make explosive mines. And there's a fire there if I had a torch, but I don't have the recipe for that just yet. I'm going to sneak back over here and go across this rickety bridge. So the whole reason I'm doing all this is to find my proper weapon that I can bring with me for the rest of the, the alpha build, as well as a shield. So there's another recipe on the table here, and I'm going to open my crown. Oh, in fact, I think there's materials in here to pick up. Yes, there is. There we go. Uh, and that lets me craft a torch. It isn't lit. It's just the base torch. Oh, I didn't pick it up because I was already holding my sword. Give me the, give me the pick up for it, please. Thank you. I'll come over here, light that, and then travel down to where my weapon is in style by burning this rope. 
We this gonna hurt. Bang. And here we have my I think it's called Modulinur. What I can never remember what the name of that damn thing is in Viking lore or how to pronounce it. The same name as the armor in Halo. So I can arm myself if I want, although I drop the torch because you need to use your arm to swing. I'm gonna take the torch with me. I've never actually tried this. I'm going to bring it with me on the boat and I'm going to go for a little trip in the boat to avoid the garden filled with killer plants that I mentioned. I'm willing to bet you can't set your boat on fire. If I accidentally do, uh, then I'll be forced to do this in a different way than I usually do it. Oh, as an alternative, you can also just climb up, use that gun up there and utterly pin him to the wall, that enemy over there. That's one way I did it when I first started playing the build. Oh, I had to jump there. Uh, yeah, so let's see if I can accidentally set my boat on fire. Just drop it. No, it seems fine. Okay, that's good. We're going to come over here to the steering... Is it a steering wheel for a boat? The, the wheel. And we're going to go around the island rather than going through it. So I think I did everything there was to do in that starter village. The, there is a, a shopkeeper that you can speak to whoever. I tried that once and I couldn't work out how to get rid of the shop interface. So I'm not going to risk it. Just in case. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get the, the crow's nest, I guess, with the crossbow on it matched up to one of these platforms in order to give me kind of like a sneaky back route into the base here. So I only briefly mentioned uh, the setup to the story, didn't I, where you're playing as a young viking, he's searching for his father, the full game's idea is that you'll be given like, say, a set of four islands to look for him in, and you can do it in any order you want, and then once you've done a, a minimum amount, another tier of islands to choose from will open up, which um, it lets you have a certain bit of customizability. that's what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm not going to go that way because there's just crafting materials and I think I have all I need. I'm going to jump up here, a bit higher than I meant to, but this is the area where if you go to their Kickstarter you will see the trailer that shows how they can solve this one room getting through that gate at the back there in multiple different ways. So I'm going to do it in a more direct route than perhaps is is apt. But if you want to see subtler ways... Also this thing here is a sp respawn point. You have 4 health and 5 lives. If you lose all your lives you are done. And generally the enemies hit hard. So that's I guess that's where the kind of Dark Souls influence comes from. Where the game is challenging. Also the enemies in this area have a yellow aura. Because they're being buffed by a stone over here. So I'm going to go take that stone. And I'm going to go chuck it into the sea. This is what I think of your special powers. Oh, there's a tent up there. I don't know how you get over there. I don't think I ever have. In fact, there's a passage down there. Huh. I bet there's stuff hidden there. Yeah. I'll leave that up to other people to find for them. There, so there we go. That's them. That's their power up gone. Oh dear. There's a phone ringing in my house. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna, there's going to be a cut and then I will be back after I answer the phone. Okay, sorry about that. Cold collars. I hate them. But anyway. That gave me an excuse to run back over here and pick up some crafting materials. Not that I really need them. So what we were saying, oh yes, I threw away the, the power-up stone, so that means all these enemies are less um, threatening. They're still threatening, but just not as much as they were before. So there is a few ways to do this, however, I'm going to do this the way I have become accustomed to in the a few attempts of running through this. To give you an idea of other ways you can do this, you can blow up the bit of wood kind of over there to create an, an alternative path to get around the enemies without them ever seeing you. There is a stealth element where you can enter a stealth mode, so you create less noise. I'm just going to drop over here and use the switch with E, as it tells me there. That is going to open my way. And while that slowly opens, I'm going to come over here and cr uh, collect some more resources. Being very, very careful not to oh, not to accidentally fall off, because down there is that death garden I was talking about earlier. There we go. Oh, oh, no, 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 serpentine. Just get around him. And we'll go into the second area of the demo. I don't intend to show off the whole build, by the way. Although I have gotten through it all once. There's kind of a secondary puzzle area that I'm now entering. And then after that, there's a boss fight. The boss fight doesn't feel complete to me. I'm not entirely sure how I won it the first time I did. I was just kind of killing enemies that appeared and eventually something worked. Uh, we're going to move that and we're going to move the table. So the idea here is we have to get through here and there's a nice big sword up there. So it's not, I think it's a fairly easy puzzle to work out how to do it. I'm going to throw the table. Oh, I didn't mean to drop it quite like that. That bar that drains when you're in the water goes really quickly. I think that's purely just because it doesn't want you swimming away from the base island. Uh, there we go, that should do. So I can, hmm, I can jump over here. I will take this. I will jump back over here. 
to get my fire and then hopefully not fall in the water. I fell in the water because the damn table's not quite placed correctly. Let me... Whoops. The swings and roundabouts of puzzles involving physics. There we go. I think that's much better place now. I could probably have just jumped along the side there as well, in fact. But still. I may have knocked over the table again. I've never had trouble with this puzzle once any other time I've been doing it. There we go. And I will light this in case I screw up. So we're going to light the rope here and that is going to send that sword swinging into the wall. Giving us access to the next room. Thank you very much. Anytime you want to stop. Oh, I just noticed the excellent lighting is even appearing on the sword. Huh. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek at this puzzle in here. And beyond this would be the boss, but I don't want to give everything away, I think. Hey, it's Chiu Ming Chen. These might help with the cluster. So that's a hint of how you do this room. Uh, so this green liquid over here, you can't stand in it because it wounds you, so you might eventually think, oh, well, I can lift this up, so that's obvious. But when you do, it turns out there was some kind of spiritual enemy. I don't know. I, I, maybe that's the cluster he's talking about, hiding behind it. So I can throw this block here, and that would obviously give me access to... Um, getting onto the next platform by going here but you can't quite make that jump and you can't kind of oh the game crashed oh no <laughs> the game crashed that's the first time I've had it crash um, let's see if I can get it back up quickly I don't think it will have saved my my progress I think it resets when you go back in let's press play here and see if I can get back into Cornerstone. Possibly. Ah, I reset my progress. Okay, unfortunately that's all I'm going to show because I would have to run through it all again. It is just an alpha build of these kind of three areas so there's no save system. It's just checkpoints when you die. Uh, I am enjoying what's here so far and, and always keep in mind that this is pre-alpha. It's not even at an alpha state and it already looks this good. It already has a workable physics system. It's a little bit clunky at times but that's a given considering the early stage it's at. I am interested in where they're going to go with this. I believe their Kickstarter, well when I first got the demo build it was about halfway to them meeting their goal by now. I assume they would be about 60-65%. Um, so if you like what you see, if you're willing to back it, do check out the links below. This was Cornerstone, the, the Song of Tyreme by Ascension Games. Thanks for checking out this video, my name is Flick. Stay tuned for more content, both Let's Look At and other videos. Ta-ta for now.